title is Unstoppable Love. Two words, unstoppable and love. And I want to do is I want to work with each of those words individually a little bit. And then we're going to put them together. So first, unstoppable. Linda and I dealt with uh, the unstoppable part this past week. As, as many of you know, if you follow us on, on Facebook, you know we were vacationing in Mexico in, in Puerto Vallarta. And I have to say, it was a wonderful place. The weather was absolutely perfect. The, the heat of the day, it never got higher than about 82, 83. And the cool of the night, it never got colder than 62. Perfect. Just like here, right? <laughs> I was able to get in the ocean every day, and I'm, I really hate cold water, but it wasn't cold, it was perfect. I got in the ocean every day, we lounged by the pools, we enjoyed good food, we enjoyed the friendliness of the people, the Americans, the Canadians, and the Mexicans. It's amazing how the setting can really change everyone's attitude. And then we began the trip back home. <laughs> and it all went well until we got to Chicago. And uh, if you've ever come flown in on an international flight to Chicago, well, here, everybody on an international flight goes to Terminal 1. And so there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people all trying to get through immigration and customs at the same time. There were too few agents, as you can imagine. So it was, it was kind of frustrating, extremely long lines. But finally, we got through and checked, the, checked our watch as this, this is going to be tight, but we can do it. We can make our plane. All we got to do is hop on this train that connects all the terminals in O'Hare. No problem. We'll zip right over there to the terminal we need to go to. So we get to the escalator, and there's a security person standing across and said, no trains tonight. <laughs> Take the bus. Well, the bus got us there. It took twice as long. But it got us there, and we checked the watches again. Okay, it's going to be really tight, but we can do it because... On our boarding pass, we have that little magic code up on the corner that says TSA. You know, that you're approved to go through the line really quickly. Perfect. We'll zip on through. Except we get to where the security checkpoint is, and there's a couple hundred people waiting to get to the checkpoint. And there's an agent there, and he said, sorry, we're not doing TSA pre tonight. <laughs> you have to wait in line like everybody else. <laughs> and so we waited in line, and by now the, we're looking at it. Well, and maybe the plane's late. That's our only hope at this point. And of course, to add insult to injury, my bag got pulled aside for special screening. <laughs> so they swabbed everything. I had a prayer book. They went through the prayer book like they were searching for secret messages. <laughs> so naturally, we missed the plane, and our next opportunity to leave was not until the following morning. So we got to camp out, sleeping. Terminal 1, Gate 9, O'Hare Airport. <laughs> but one way or another, we were going to get home, right? We're unstoppable. Just so we could get here in time for more snow. <laughs> I'm not sure about the love part of this, because what I would really love is to be back on that beach in Mexico right now. <laughs> but let's take a look at the love part. Let's take the typical romance novel, typical romantic film. You know, you know basically how they go, right? You got, you got the main characters that meet each other, and, well, maybe there's true love here. But then circumstances get in the way, or people get in the way, or people's circumstances get in the way. And it takes the whole book or the whole movie to work through all of the roadblocks, but in the end, true love wins, Right? And the lovers come together and to complete the cliche, they run together in the rain in slow motion. <laughs> Actually, that, that whole romantic genre, you could see an evolution of this from the medieval fairy tale. Now, I sometimes use this illustration when I do wedding sermons, so if you've happened to be at a wedding where I've done the sermon, I've done this, my apologies, but it fits really well here. So what we're going to do today, and I need your help, we're going to write a fairy tale. Okay? How does every fairy tale begin? Once upon a time. There was a... A princess? Is she a beautiful princess? A beautiful princess. Okay, we have any other ideas? We're going to go with a beautiful princess? 
Okay. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess who was... You've got to have some problem for the princess, right? Huh? Sad. She's sad. Why is she sad? She's stuck in a tower. We have a beautiful princess that's stuck in the tower. She's being held captive by an R A. Ugly stepmother. Okay. <laughs> we have a, a beautiful princess who is imprisoned in a tower by her ugly stepmother. But along comes a prince. A prince. And is he a handsome prince? Oh, very. Okay. Very, very handsome prince. Probably has shining armor and everything, right? And what's he do? Rescues her. How does he do that? Climbs the tower. A handsome prince. With his, he takes his armor off because it's hard to climb with the armor. <laughs> he climbs the tower. He opens the window. Throws the beautiful princess over his shoulder. And shimmies down the vine, right? <laughs> and then they are married amidst great rejoicing in all of the kingdom. And the bells ring and the birds sing and they live happily ever after. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> Get real. <laughs> it's a fairy tale. These fairy tales come from a time in history when living was difficult, disease was rampant, life tended to pass very quickly with much pain and much sorrow, and it was a time when not even the princes and the princesses lived very happily at any time. But these tales, these fairy tales were fun, and they survived the centuries, but they're built on escapism. I want to tell you about a true unstoppable love. And so we start this story of true unstoppable love with our story. Now we probably all like to see ourselves as that handsome prince or the beautiful princess. We want to see ourselves as uh, always fair, kind, just. But if you look at the Bible, it paints a very different picture of us. In our, actually, our reading from Ephesians, that part I said, the diagnosis part, it goes right on through this. It tells a little review about us. So let's see what it says. It says we were spiritually dead. We were disobedient sinners. We follow and obey the forces of evil. We give in to our darkest desires. And St. Paul reminds us this includes everyone. It's not the other guy down the street. This is everyone. And as such, we were all destined in this state to suffer from God's anger. And we can't even blame the ugly stepmother or the wicked witch or the hideous troll because we did it to ourselves. But then comes our prince. And he doesn't free us with a kiss. The kiss he gets is a kiss of betrayal from Judas. But he accepted that kiss and he accepted all that followed because of the unstoppable love that he Brings. And so he accepts humiliation and he accepts rejection and unjust trials and merciless condemnation. He accepts torture. He accepts a cruel and humiliating death. He accepts burial in a borrowed tomb. That's a pretty depressing story, isn't it? Except for the ending. Except for the ending. Because that unstoppable love that took Jesus to the cross for unlovable us raised Jesus to new life. And that unstoppable love opens heaven for him and for us with him. That unstoppable love gives us the assurance that day by day we are his. We belong to him and nothing can ever separate us from that love that unstoppable love is so great that according to that passage from Ephesians we read, we are not only saved, we are raised. And we are not only raised, but we rule with Jesus. And we not only rule with Jesus, but we are graced to do God's work right here and right now. God's good work to help our fellow travelers 
on this earth. And I want to give you an easy reminder of that unstoppable love. A slightly different, a little more familiar translation of John 3, 16, 17. And as a little aside, the most common question I get here as a pastor, it's not, what does God want me to do with my life? You know what the most common question is? What's the Wi-Fi password here? <laughs> so I'm going to give you the answer. It's John 3, 16, 17. <laughs> Lowercase, no punctuation. So you can remember that. <laughs> but here's the more important part. Remember the words that stand behind that. And so I'm going to give you these words again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him, with him, with that unstoppable love, we can live happily ever after. Amen. And now may the peace of God.